This is Eleanor Hospice in Gravesend, one of Kent's busiest hospices. A registered charity, Eleanor provides treatment to over 2,500 people, requiring care and support right across the county. The care that they deliver is free for people of all ages. 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year. I have my own little motto, and it's live life hard and fast and every day as if it's your last. You know, life is precious. When people realise they have a shorter time than they thought was likely, actually every moment matters. Their 200 strong staff and 600 volunteers are dedicated to making people's remaining days the best they can be. It's about just letting that person just leave the ward with dignity and respect. I'm sure every nursing profession cares, but there's something special about hospice. Hi. Eleanor also take their support and treatment right into people's homes. <laughs> to have a really good cry is amazing. <laughs> you may think a hospice is a place people come to die. Some people think as soon as you say the word hospice, that's the end of the road. But it's actually a place people come to live. There's a huge amount to offer. It is full of fun. It is full of laughter. You need to live life to the full. You don't know what's around the corner. So let's make the most of what we've got. Since I started Eleanor, my outlook on life has totally, totally changed. And even my family have noticed that. I've often been asked, how can you say that working in a hospice with death around is satisfying and gives you job satisfaction? The satisfaction is being able to help people um, in the most darkest time in their lives. It's the best job I've ever, ever done. Best job. The support that was given to my husband and myself and my two sons um, was just overwhelming, really. I don't know how we coped without it. It's really difficult to put into words until you've received that care. The circumstances in which I, I got the job actually were unrelated to me having cancer. But now I'm in the job, I kind of feel like I want to use my experience to, in some way, give back to other members of the Cancer Club and to kind of say to them, I'm here for you and I'm here to help you because you know what, I get it. It took me a long time to get to being a nurse, a long time. Um, I knew it was something I'd always do and I can honestly hand on heart say it's the best thing I've ever done. So yeah, I couldn't do anything else. Members of the public say to me, I don't know how you can do that job. I've had other nurses say to me, how can you do that job? But the rewards for me are much, much greater. At times it's, it is challenging here, but I find the hospice, the people who I work with, staff and volunteers, the patients and the families who I meet, they are exceptional people, all with stories to tell. Nine a.m. at Eleanor Hospice, and palliative care nurse specialist Sharon Baker is preparing to head out on her first home visit of the day. So we're going to go and see Mandy today, who is a lady who's been recently diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. She married her childhood sweetheart yesterday, um, no, Wednesday, in Durant Valley Hospital in Oakwald, um, and then they managed to pull this huge wedding together within 24 hours. So they really pulled the stops out for her up there. So yeah, it's quite exciting. It's lovely. Hi, Sharon from Eleanor, come to see Mandy. Hi, Sharon, come in. Hi, thanks very much. Come Thank you, darling. Through. Thanks very much. So, sweet pea. Yeah. You know who we are? Yeah. Because you've mm -hmm. done lots of things from the Eleanor before, and I know you've had a fair bit of involvement. Yeah. So I don't need to go all through that. You know who we are and what we are and all the rest of it. When you had that injection yesterday, did that help with the pain? Oh, my God, the pain was unbearable yesterday. I know it was, though. And it was a... When I had that injection, I can't tell you how much. Pain relief. Okay. For how long? How long did that work? Quite a while, wasn't it? 
she just come back to mum yesterday. Sure, yeah, and that's why I want to be mum. Of course, well, you are mum. Yeah, yeah, I want to be mum. Absolutely, absolutely. Unfortunately, we was broken, the news was broken to us on Tuesday um, of this week, and, um, yeah, it's, it's terminal and it's spread and, and there's nothing they can do. It's incurable and now it's all about making sure that she's pain free. Mum has always been somebody who helps others, always. She would do anything for anyone, um, including me. She's continuously going out of way to make sure that, you know, I've got everything equally. I do the same for her and dad. Jess is just being amazing. She wants to do everything for her mum. She wants to be there 100% for her mum. And you can only admire that, you know. We need to keep an eye on Jess as well, just to make sure that she's as supported as she can be. And that if she does need help, we're ready, we're waiting, you know, we want to work alongside her, but she's just fantastic. She clearly adores her mum, it's lovely. So I understand that you got married in the hospital. So tell me what brought all that about? As we always say, we left it to the last moment again. <laughs> right, Welcome so... <laughs> and then we, um, and we heard um, the bad news and stuff and said, right, we've got to get this pulled forward. Everything was arranged within hours. The wedding ring, the free cakes, I only wanted one. Um, <laughs> three cakes. Yeah, free wedding cakes. 13 bottles of Prosecco. It was just like hundreds of... Everyone just rallied around. And there's so many people in the room, didn't we? It was amazing. Uh, the wedding was uh, unreal. How the ward put up with us, I don't know, because there were so many of us. Um, but she had, I think there was about 35, 40 guests maybe, and we was in a side room. Uh, <laughs> where we all fitted, I'm not entirely sure. At this point, it was mum's wish to do it and, and what she wants, she will get, so. Everyone's been just so nice to me. There's a reason for that, sweetheart. Why? Because you've been lovely throughout your life. Yeah, I just and hope... It's, just, it's a little bit of your family giving payback to other people. I want to leave a legacy of the people I've met in my life. Um, everyone, all my friends, everyone, they've been... They've rallied around me for my wedding day. There's been such a support network after following the wedding and everyone is just so, like, you know, happy for her and, and glad that she's got her wish and and what's really lovely is is rather than talking about the sadness of the fact that her cancer is terminal we're now talking about the wedding and talking about how amazing that was so it's given her something to really focus on if something should happen to me or i'm not at work i'm off sick i'm on annual leave whatever it is and you've got a problem there's always someone that you can phone up and speak to and they'll be able to access all of your information they'll know exactly what's going on and they'll be able to help you okay that's a fridge magnet, so you can't get away from us, but right in the centre of your eye. And you can read through all of that, my lovely, and it tells you about all the different things that we do for carers, yeah. complementary therapies, some of the other there stuff. So have a read in. through that in your own time. I know. No, honey, it's fine. I just don't want to be hurt. I don't want no pain. No, I know, my love. I'm and I know out. you'll make it right for me. We absolutely will. We I absolutely know. will. Oh, you're so lovely. Thank you. I feel myself well enough. <laughs> <laughs> It was lovely. Her, she had lots of family there, she had lots of friends there, and bless her heart, you know, this is obviously her lady who's given her whole life, you know, she's, she's not used to being on the receiving end, so, I, you know, I just wanted, I wanted Mandy and her family to know that actually this is about her now, and it's lovely that she's done all this work, it's lovely that she's thinking about other people, but we need to concentrate on her a little bit and her family. She is in amazing spirits. Um... It's my mum at the end of the day, and I've seen her suffer enough in life, so I've never done wrong by her. I won't ever do wrong by her. You know, I am sad, and I will be sad, and, um, but when that day comes, that will be that day, but for as long as she hears, she won't see me sad or upset. <laughs> It's an exciting morning at Eleanor. There's been a special delivery for training facilitator Sue Marshall. I've received a letter inviting me to the royal wedding. <laughs> After we realised what it was, um, we spoke to Natalie and uh, she confirmed that I've been nominated um, as part of Eleanor for my outstanding work with the students that we work with. 
So I was asked by the, um, one of the Deputy Lieutenants of Kent to nominate um, some suitable people for attendance at the Royal Wedding of Prince Harry and, and Meghan in May. And um, one of those was Sue Marshall. And we found out today that she's been accepted and has been invited to attend the Royal Wedding party. So we're going to go around the building now and um, tell a few people the news and uh, see if we can surprise a few people. It's going to be a happy Friday, I think. Hi. Have you got a moment? Yes. I oh, just wondered if we could um, have a look at this, because I don't really understand it. Do you mind? No. Thank you. A finger me to again. What are you doing? Yeah. Lords, ladies and gentlemen. Beverly. Susan. Would you do me the honours of uh, reading this for me? Uh, got something to show you? <laughs> Huh? Can I have a day off? No. Because? When? When do you want a day off? 19th of May. Ring any bells? No. When I do Sunday roast, I always put a tiara on. And, you know, I just think I belong. I'm the right person for the job. in part of the wedding day of <laughs> His Royal Highness <laughs> Prince Henry of Wales oh and God. Miss Meghan Markle. Oh <laughs> that is amazing. No, really? <laughs> OMG! Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you have to pay to get that? <laughs> So it's just brilliant to think that that hard work and dedication of the whole team is being recognised and one of our, one of our team is going um, to such an exciting event to represent all of us. And I think we'll all be waving flags and cheering her on when she goes up there. Yeah, very proud. Incredibly proud. I didn't see it coming at all. So there's so many fantastic people in this organisation. I didn't think, you know, I would get recognised. It's very special. I lost a couple of friends uh, last year and it had a massive effect on me and my family. And it made me take a step back and think where I was going uh, with my life. My mother herself has been um, sort of on the receiving end of a hospice and I just kind of felt it was time to do something different. It's made me realise that every day is precious, every person in your life is precious and and being able to do the things that that you want to be able to do when you can do them is so important i've worked for the hospice for 10 years um, and sadly seven years ago my mother died she was a patient of the hospice and um, she enjoyed all of the facilities that that we have here uh, my mum had made the decision that she wanted to die at home i then was diagnosed um, with an illness that isn't going to go away. Hospice care appealed to me because I looked after my mother-in-law and cared for her um, when she died. I think I got to know my mother-in-law more in those last three months of her life than I had known her for the other years that I was married to her son. There was um, uh, a family a little while ago where uh, a brother and um, who, who died and the sister was absolutely devastated and so I just sent my brother a text message telling him how much I loved him. Do you think it's important to do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think we should all, we should all tell our loved ones that we love them whenever we can. Don't put it off to next week, don't put it off to next year because you never know, next week or next year might not come. And do those things when you can. Yeah, since my diagnosis, it's very important to live every day. None of us know what's around the corner. Um, none of us can expect to be here tomorrow. So it's very, very important to live every day. I've learned I'm a lot stronger 
than what I thought I was. I learned that I can deal with situations that most people would never ever dream of and think of. I'm human at the end of the day. And I think, you know, when you have had somebody that you've loved and you've lost and things like that and doing this job, it just, it does heighten it. It does make it so much more real and you understand and you empathise. I don't think until you've worked with people who have a life-limiting condition that you actually know what living is all about. I've not spoken about this. Once she, once she died, I realised how much the I had got from that experience and, and I wanted other carers to get that same experience. Well, you do only live once, and life's too short. Live it for now. Enjoy it while you can. Monday afternoon, and nurse practitioner Leslie Dawson is going to visit a patient at her home. Today I'm going to see Diana, who um, has an ovarian primary for which she's had treatment, but unfortunately then spread to her uh, bowel, um, and w for which she's had surgery, um, but actually there are no further treatment options. So the disease within her pelvis and within her bowel um, is increasing. She's just come back from a week with her daughter, um, which was a very special week for her. She wanted to go and um, spend some quality time and have discussions and um, she knows it's probably the last time she's going to be able to go and see her as she lives some, some way away. Um, so today she's not as well as she was, um, so we're going to see her, see if we can do anything to make her symptoms a little bit better um, and just to see how last week went. Hi Michael. Hello, nice to see you. And you. Hi Diana. Hi Lindsay. Oh, not a good day. No. Oh, yeah. What's happening? It's rough. Rough. It's real. Okay. So, Friday, you reduce the steroids. I did, yes, yeah, down to two. Down to two. So, since reducing down to two, yeah. has the pain got any worse? Yes. Whereabouts? Back and tummy. Back and tummy. Yeah. With reducing the steroids, we may that may have caused a little bit of what you're feeling now. Right. So the question is, do we want to go back up to where you were if you feel you got a benefit from them? But then we have to look at the long-term effects yeah. of those. This is awful. Mm. Um, no, it's horrible. It's just existing. Mm. Um, so who think I should stay on them? I stay on them. I think give it a go mm -hmm. and see how you feel in a few days. Yeah. Okay, steady? Yeah. I think it's dropping when it's you dropping start. Yeah. You're dizzy. Yeah. yeah. I can see you are. Yeah. Just sit. Yeah. Right, hang on. <laughs> Do you think I'm going down here quite quickly, Leslie? I think you're less well than you were before you went to your daughter's. Mm, I feel less well, yeah. Yeah. But I think if you, as I said before, if you got benefit for that week, then we need to continue that benefit for as long as we can. Yeah. If there comes a point where you're taking them and things aren't good, OK, then let's stop them. Mm. But all the time they're giving you some sort of quality, then let's go with them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're a gem, thank you. It was a gem. You're very welcome. Bless your heart, thank you. And you got everything you needed to get done last week. Yes. Yeah. It's it just been good just to have one last time up there, you know. Yeah. And some talking and sort some things out. It's good, yeah. Good. If that was the last time it probably was, I'm happy with that. Good. Good. That's what we needed. That's what we wanted to achieve. It's a good it. week. Brilliant. So when I saw Diana today, I was struck by how tired she looks. Um, 
And she admits to that as well. She's, she is feeling less well um, than she was before she went to her daughter's, which is only to be expected. Um, but knowing, as she said, going to her daughter's, that's what she wanted to do. She's achieved that and now she can wait for the next part of her journey. Leading the spiritual aspect of the work done at Elena is Chaplain Ben Cooper. Ben's work forms an important part of the care provided at the hospice. Part of his role involves meeting patients and offering support and guidance, regardless of faith and denomination. Today, he's come to see patient Reese. Morning, Reese. Morning. It's good to see you, my friend. No, it's good to see you too. We were just about to take Holy Communion, break in a bread, take another cup. Um, Reese comes in very regular, but sometimes it's difficult for us to not to get together that quick and to be able to do that. So today was a very important moment for both of us. Right, I ain't seen you in a while. It's been some It's time, been a yeah. couple of weeks or so, hasn't it? Uh -huh. Yeah, but thank God that we can do this together. I really believe that's very comforting because uh, Reese is limited to get to church. Um, so just to be able to do that together is very, very important. But also, it tells us that this is not about a church activity, that this can be done anywhere. I'll read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, before we take a, the bread and and we just take a moment to reflect here. So it's very important for the individual that maybe can't get to church, that doesn't have an opportunity to, to take of communion. So yeah, it's very powerful for the individual and for myself as well. But let a man examine himself and drink of that cup. Great text. So what we get from that, Reese, is that we understand that this has come around by the Lord Jesus Christ and we know that a couple of days ago, Resurrection Sunday, what a powerful time. It what a powerful time. Here we go, Reese. As we take this, we understand that this symbolises the, the body of Christ. So, Father, thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Uh, faith is extremely important in, in the hospice environment or uh, at this particular point of anyone's life. It strengthens, it, it asks the questions, what happens. Uh, them immediate questions, but faith is, is, is a strong point, faith. You, f you find that, that believers that are going through whatever they may be going through in the hospice environment, their faith increases, they find peace, they find more joy. God oh. bless you, Reese. It's good to see you, my friend. Yeah, bless Take you, care, man. every blessing. No, I will, Mum well? Thank you. Yeah, Mum's good. Family good? Family's good, yeah. Good, it's lovely to see you. I'll catch you in a little while. Right. Every blessing. Right. God bless you. you. For me, this is a, this is a great great place to be for me. This, this isn't the job, it's a calling. It goes beyond the role of clocking in and clocking out nine to five. It's, it's within, it goes deeper than that. This job has really difficult moments and you wouldn't be human if you didn't get emotionally attached to some of the people that you've worked with for a long time. They're all brave, they're all courageous to have discussions about death and dying. I think the difficulties are having some of the huge discussions that we have. And I always say my job isn't about decisions, it's about giving patients options and choices. And it's about you know, having really frank and open discussions about if we stay here, this is what will happen, this is what the consequences will be. I'm a great believer in talking about death and funerals. Um, I would like to have conversations with families to find out what they want when they die. Um, now, most of my family go, I don't care, I'm dead, do whatever you want. But actually, it's not about that. It's about the people that you've left behind. It is extremely emotional. Um, you have to get involved with people at particularly very vulnerable times of their life or death. It is hard, we all know that, but we laugh, we joke, we're a good team. Yeah, we support each other. It's really, really important. Uh, sometimes you can, you can walk away and you can feel that 
that was a job well done. But I think if you can do that, um, I think you should pat yourself on the shoulder and just say, you know, that was good today. I just see it as, as doing my job. I don't, I don't see it as doing anything special. It's who I am and it's who they are. You know, you're all human beings and <clears throat> and you feel compassion and empathy for the family and, and if you didn't feel that, you shouldn't be in this job. It's Tuesday morning and nurse Tracy is on her way to her first home visit of the day. So we're going to see uh, Mary Canning. She's 68 years old. She's quite a complex lady. She's got um, COPD, she's got cardiomyopathy um, and also some uh, osteoarthritis which has caused a couple of uh, spinal fractures which give her a lot of pain. That um, seems to be one of her main problems at the moment, so we'll be doing a bit of symptom control with that. A large part of the work Eleanor's community nurses do involves talking to patients about plans for end of life, including DNA CPR forms. So a DNA CPR form is actually a form that is completed by a medical professional when uh, if a person's heart stops beating or they stop breathing, then CPR would not be performed on them. In the community, we do try and have the discussion with the patient um, to help them ease into that part of their journey. Hello. Hello. You all right? Still using the lorazepam for any anxiety that you were getting before? Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah? Yes. And that's still working well? Yes, yes. OK. Since I, uh, I was in hospital and I come out, I think it, it everything's it for me because mm. of all what's been going on. Yeah. I started having a sort of panic attack and I've had three since I've come out. Right. So I don't know if it's the stress of being up there and they got right down to the bare basics of everything. Yeah. Um, you probably had a lot of frank conversations. Yes, you? yes. And um, they wanted to, me to sign this piece of paper. Was this the do not resuscitate form we talked yeah, about before? Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to sign it at the minute. OK. Last time when I came out, you were, um, you thought that you would probably have that form, but you wanted to talk to your family yeah. about it. Did yeah. you, ha did you have discussions? Day, yeah. no. no. OK. It would just mm. be, if you were at home here and you collapsed and your heart stopped beating and the paramedics were called out, then we just wouldn't try and restart your heart or your breathing at that point. Right. Is that any clearer at all? Yes, kind of. It's just not in my head settled. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'll um, have a think about it. OK. I think I've got a bit more time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> You're looking brighter today than you were last time I came out. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Have you got any other thoughts or concerns or anything that's bothering you at the moment? Yeah, it's just um, me worry about Tim and my family, you know, I worry for them, but that is my main thing. You know, I'm not worried about leaving the earth. I'll worry about who I'm going to leave. Yeah. Mary, in that respect, you know that the Eleanor just don't walk away from Tim and your children after you've died. We're still there to support them. Yes. So, yes, you know... That's why I, we can't speak highly enough of you, you know, every one of you. We've just been to see Mary, and um, I think it was a good visit. Uh, we did the discussion again about um, do not resuscitate. Actually, Mary brought that up because it had been discussed while she was in um, the London hospital. Mary's always been an upbeat person since um, the first time I met her um, and Tim. They're quite characters and in their own um, rights, really. They're a very good couple together, and if one of them's feeling a bit low, then the other one always picks them up, and I think the family do that as well. All in all, it was a good visit, and she's doing well. The
The care Eleanor Hospice offers children goes beyond medication and therapy. They also provide opportunities for families to enjoy quality time together. Today, Tina Humphreys, the hospice's Youth and Family Services Coordinator, is organising a special party. Every year we have an Easter party for our, our patients and our families all come along with their siblings. I think if you can make somebody smile when they're going through a very, very sad time, a journey they're going through that no family wants to go through, I think um, we bring a little bit of laughter and smile. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. So we're now going to take the minibus all the way up to Icedy Drys Community Centre and unload again there, hoping to meet our volunteers, so um, they'll give us a hand at the other end. Bring it in and we'll put it through to the personal care area. Please speak to the families and speak to the children, even though you may not get a response, but the families are really watching out for you to talk to their children. Uh, it's really quite important. We're just anxious now about people arriving. Food's arrived, uh, the family should be arriving shortly. It's been manic, but we've got there. It's just really nice to be able to come along, so I've literally popped in to kind of see what's happening, um, you know, meet with the families, um, I'm doing some social media, so I'm taking some photographs which are going on our Facebook and Twitter account. It's lovely to have a lot more families and to have some who haven't been before and this is their first event, so it's really nice to welcome them and hopefully they'll be able to attend more. Marley the Magician has arrived. He's uh, going to come round the tables and he's going to do a little show about half past one. My heart is still pounding, <laughs> um, but I feel really happy. Lots of smiles, lots of friendly faces. So what more could you ask for? Take a big deep breath. Take a deep breath. From the outside of the balloon, it's now on the inside of the balloon. It's just really nice for us to see how many families we're helping. There's only some of them here today, but the care goes on at home, so it's behind closed doors sometimes. So it's really lovely to be able to meet some of the families personally and talk to them. The whole family can have fun, so it's a really perfect day out. Eleanor is for the whole family, and I think this shows it, that we've brought all our families together. Thanks to the girls and the team and the volunteers, we've all managed to pull it off. Just to see the children smiling is just so lovely and it means so much to me. I'm incredibly proud um, to be a nurse working for Eleanor. It's an amazing organisation that really puts patients at the heart of everything they do and that's throughout the organisation. Everybody does their role with a smile, um, but you know, they see some distressing things, it can be very emotional. We go on this journey with them, we try and help and support them through all the pit holes of that, you know, that road of life brings you. I look forward to coming into work, every day is different. I used to be uh, very impatient, uh, very fast-paced, whereas now I think, you know what, you only live for a short while and let's make the most of it. Let's face it, we wouldn't be in healthcare if we were looking to do a job that was just for the money, but, you know, we, we have job satisfaction and uh, we can make a difference and, and that's bigger than anything. When I say I work with angels, I truly do. Sometimes have very difficult days, but they cope with it amazingly. It just is an amazing place. At Eleanor, everybody is important. It doesn't matter whether you're the CEO or you're a volunteer. Um, we all look out for each other. We're all very important, and we, the organisation could not run without one of, any one of us. Is it difficult? Yes. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't but the rewards make it all worthwhile. I feel that it's a privilege to be included in somebody's life at this time. Um, and if I can make a difference to them and if I can make a difference to their families, then to me, that's what I'm here for. That's my job done.
it's a real sense of achievement to know that you're being part of that journey and that you're supporting these families through such a horrible time but also giving them the best that they can have. This afternoon, Nurse Leslie is preparing to discuss DNA CPR with a patient at home. OK, we're going to see Jenny today. Uh, Jenny's a lady with a lung cancer. She's been on our books for about 18 months now. Um, and initially was having chemotherapy, um, but that recently has stopped. She's less well. She's getting quite a lot of pain in her knees and things. So we made some changes last week, about 10 days ago. So we're now going back to review those changes. Jenny's always very positive. Um, She's a lovely lady, she's always very kind, very independent, doesn't like to be a burden to anybody and has the very good support of one of her neighbours um, and they've been friends for many, many years. So although she lives alone, she's got a really good support network around her. Hi Jennifer. Hello Leslie. How are good you? Good to see you. And you? How are you doing? Uh, not too bad. OK. Had a lot of pain. But that's not unusual, learning to live with that now. So tell me where that pain is. It's that knee. It's still, still that knee. Yeah. No changes to your medicines at all? No, no, no. nothing at all. So what, what did they suggest, anything? Only that I get in touch with the doctor after the bank holiday to get some um, physiotherapy. Would you consider coming into the hospice and see if we can get it knocked on the head sooner? We do have a physiotherapist on site, mm -hmm. so that he can have a look at you. Could I talk to him about it first of and then...? Of course you can. My only thought is that we can probably get it done quicker uh -huh. at the hospice than we can at home. If your condition was to change, mm -hmm. we do need to think about what we would do about that, mm -hmm. OK? And I know we've spoken before about resuscitation, Mm -hmm. but it's not something that you've wanted to approach. As far as the um, do not resuscitate, I must admit, I, to begin with, I was going to sign it and leave it at that, but I've changed my mind quite a bit since. When you try to say to somebody the pain is so bad that you could punch walls, yeah. you know, and like, like you say, I'm not really a whinger, I don't carry on about it because there's no point. No point in moaning about it because it's not going to go away. Things aren't going to change. And I know they aren't going to change. And as far as yourselves go, I, I haven't got a complaint about anything. It's not uncommon for people in the situation that Jenny and our other patients are in not to want help. It's very difficult to give up your independence. Um, and that's the biggest thing for people is they've gone from being very independent to suddenly needing help. And that's a very, very difficult thing to accept. You're not used to having to rely on other people. That's what this is. It comes hard. Yeah. It does come hard. That's the frustrating part. But this is all sort of life and death, isn't it? It's... Yourselves have been marvellous. What have I got to complain about? There's a people a lot worse off than me. Because I did get a bit of um, a telling off by one of the Eleanor nurses when I said to her something about... Um, Oh, there's people out there, I said, that need you a sight lot more than I do. And she said, excuse me, but you are one of those people now. But I didn't see myself like that. We've probably known each other about 18 months, so you haven't... you've done well. Mm -hmm. You have done well. The visit with Jenny went really well. Jenny's always in very good spirits. I don't think I've seen her ever with a frown on her face. Um, she is a lady that makes the best of every day. We're sort of talking about maybe she comes into the inpatient unit here, whether we can actually get her symptoms under control sooner. That's something she's going to consider. Um, failing that, we've got a plan B. So if she decides she doesn't want to come in, it's about then getting the help in that she needs to support her at home. She's had lots of things sort of thrown in her, in her path um, and she's got over them and she's done really, really well. Eleanor's dedicated children's team provide much needed respite for families with children who have life-threatening illnesses. Last week, children's nurse Sarah visited patient Sophie at her home to discuss an advanced care plan. Today, 
assistant practitioner Hannah and children's care assistant Emma are making a return visit to provide Sophie's parents with some respite. Respite is about offering relief to carers so they can look after their own physical and mental health needs. We are mainly there to look after Sophie's brothers, Noah and Joshua. It gives mum the perfect time to spend quality time with just Sophie and to have mum and daughter time. She chills with her, she may give her a cuddle and just spend time with her daughter while we take the boys out and burn some energy from them so that when they get back they're not as much of a handful for mum. We've known Joshua since he was born. Do you remember him yeah. coming to the Christmas party when he was like, like he's had us in his life from the start, hasn't he? Yeah. So we've always been there. And I think me and you have been the most regular members of staff going in yeah. to, to him. I think it's quite nice for the parents, like during the half term when we take just the boys out and take them to the cinema or take them to the park. I think that's quite nice. You've got big as well. I feel like I haven't seen you in ages. I don't think I've seen you since Christmas. We yes. bought some games with us as well. Oh. oh. Okay then, you set it up. I'll be blue, I'll be blue. Who wants to be the bank? My daughter Sophie, she's 11, um, nearly 12. She's diagnosed with a rare metabolic disorder, non ketotic hyperglycemia. At 10 days old when they diagnosed her, it was a bit of a shock. Um, she was in intensive care and they kind of said, that's it, there's no more they could do for her and we'd have to turn the ventilators off that were keeping her alive. And, yeah, 11 years later, we're still here, partly, I think, due to Eleanor. <laughs> Why, we're having a li little chat. Which way are you going to go that way? So, the boys are quite right, aware that Sophie it. has a condition and it is right. actually quite nice to watch the boys play with Sophie, so they're very gentle with Sophie and they always tell Sophie what she's got in her hands or what they're going to do with her. And I never forget the time when Mum said that at Christmas they were taking Sophie's presents up to Sophie, uh, telling her the colours of the wrapping paper, getting her to touch the wrapping paper. And once she opened it, they told her what the present was. So it's nice for us to go in there to give them support, not just for Sophie, but for them. Definitely having their support and having someone on the end of the phone there if I need them to do anything, any help with any medical emergencies and things, they're there and they help us out and try and keep us out of hospital as much as possible. How's yeah. Sophie been? Yeah, she's been OK. She's, um, she's had quite a good week at school. I think she's been awake a lot. We've had a meeting this morning to say she's been doing well. We've had some of her goals. I'm keeping this going. There's been lots of standing. And how have you been? Yeah, fine. Busy. <laughs> As usual with the boys and with Sophie. I'd say coping with them running around everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we are really grateful when everyone comes and we get respite with Sophie and the boys to have someone here and to help out. It's amazing. <laughs> I think we've had Eleanor for nine years now, and I think, um, yeah, having them hit around and here has definitely helped massively and just just have that extra support from someone that knows, understands, and they know her as well as they know us. It was really nice for us both to go together and to share that, that experience together and the respite together, and I think the boys loved it, being the both of us, so, yeah. <laughs> to think that she's, she wasn't supposed to be and now she is, and trying to get your head around that sometimes is quite hard and just I suppose you, you the good thing is you tend not to take things for granted so much you do think make every day count make it make it a memory because you never know if it's going to be the last day If I could describe Eleanor in one word, that word would have to be unconditional. I think the word I'd use is compassion. I think actually the one word would be together. Outstanding. Definitely caring. Family. It's 
special. Amazing. Inspiring. It's just so hard to put one word on what we are. We're so many things. Sometimes emotional. A one-off, it's three words. <laughs> it can be enlightening for some. It can be enjoyable. It can be happy, it can be sad. I don't think there's a word to describe them. I truly do not think there is a word to say just how amazing they are.